What is going on, wonderful people? It's Medicosis Perfect Nailus. Welcome back to my statistics playlist. In previous videos, we have talked about the normal distribution, the measures of central tendency, such as the mean, the median, and the mode. We talked about the range. We talked about Pearson's correlation coefficient, descriptive statistics versus inferential statistics, quantitative variables versus qualitative variables, numerical variables versus categorical variables, discrete variables versus continuous variables, nominal variables versus ordinal variables, independent variables versus dependent variables, and much more. Today, we shall talk about the topic of percentiles. What is the difference between percentiles, quadriles, and standard deviation? Let's find out. Click the like button, click the subscribe button, and let's get started. This is my statistics playlist. Please watch these videos in order for maximum understanding and retention. If you wish to converse with me, said Voltaire, define your terms. So, what's the definition of percentiles? Percentiles are quantiles that divide data sets into 100 equal parts. Per cent means per 100. That's why we have a hundred cents in the dollar. A Roman centurion was a commander of 100 legionnaires, and there are 100 years in the century, and 100 centimeters in the meter. And that's why we have the first percentile, the second percentile, third, fourth, fifth, 99th, all the way up to 100. Why do we care? Because percentiles show the relative standing of a score in a population by identifying the percent of values below that score or below and equal to that score. What does that mean? Here is a real-life example. Sarah scored in the 95th percentile. Good for her. But what does that mean? It means that 95% of students scored below Sarah's score or below and equal to Sarah's score. The former is called the exclusive definition of percentiles, whereas the latter is the inclusive definition of percentiles. And for the math buffs out there, the percentile function is the inverse of the cumulative distribution function. So, if we say 95th percentile, what does that mean? It means 95 over 100. So, therefore, the cumulative distribution function is the opposite, meaning it's 100 over 95. If you wish to see more statistics videos like this in the future, please drop your favorite math emoji in the comments. If you wish to download these doozy colorful notes, go to medicosisperfectionalis.com. I help you learn, understand, and pass exams. If you want me to personally tutor you, reach out to me on my website. This is the normal distribution curve, also known as the Gaussian curve, otherwise known as the bell-shaped curve. And if this curve is the normal distribution curve, therefore, the middle value is the mean, it's also the median, and it's also the mode, as long as it is a normal distribution curve, and it's not skewed to the left or to the right. In this case, mean equals median equals mode, and by the way, all of them equal the 50th percentile, meaning 50% of the scores are below me and 50% of the scores are above me, to the left and to the right, respectively. And if you remember calculus, about half of calculus was about measuring the area under the curve. The area under the normal distribution curve is the percentile. So let's say that I am shading this area under the curve. How much of the area is this compared to the total curve? If you say 50%, you're absolutely correct. Therefore, this line represents the 50th percentile. What if I go above it? Then you go 60th, 70th, 80th, 90th, and then 100th. As you go from the left to the right, the area under the normal distribution curve increases. That's why the percentile increases from left to right. Please remember that the 50th percentile always equals the median. But if this is a normal distribution curve, then the 50th percentile equals the mode and the mean as well as the median. Let's talk about standard deviations. First, why do we need standard deviations in the first place? 
Let's say that we have a farmer and the farmer says this egg is bigger than average. The standard deviation will give that farmer a way to tell exactly how big the egg is compared to normal. It's a deviation that is standardized. So when you say to a statistician, this egg is one standard deviation above the mean, every statistician in every country knows exactly what you mean by this. Or by saying that this person's IQ is one standard deviation below the mean, every statistician knows exactly what you mean by this. Let's say that one student is six inches taller than the other student. It's easier to imagine this if we're talking about the height of human beings. But how about six inches in the difference between the heights of elephants? How about the heights of dogs? The standard deviation gives you a way of taking that average, the mean, and that variability, deviation, into account, into a standardized account. So that six inches can be explained and expressed in a way that means the same thing for the height of a student compared to other students, the height of an elephant compared to other elephants, and the height of a dog compared to other dogs. That's why the deviation has been standardized. So this is the mean, this is one standard deviation above the mean, and this is one standard deviation below the mean. Two standard deviations above the mean, two standard deviations below the mean three standard deviations above the mean, three standard deviations below the mean. And it's going to look like this. Again, the 50th percentile is right smack in the middle. Now let's talk about percentiles versus standard deviations. The 50th percentile corresponds to the median. One standard deviation above the mean is at the 84th percentile. For the mathematics connoisseurs out there, how many percentiles did we increase by going from the 50th to the 84th. 84 minus 50 is 34 to the right. Okay, how about subtracting 34 to the left? 50 minus 34 is about 16. In reality, this is not precisely 16, but 15.87, and this is not precisely 84, but let's keep things simple. 84th versus the 16th. Okay, how about another standard deviation to the right? I went from 84 to about 97 and a half. So this is a rise by how much? 97.5 minus 84 is about 13.5 above. How about 13.5 below? Well, last I checked, negative one standard deviation was 16. 16 minus 13 and a half is two and a half. Next, from two to three standard deviations, I went from 97.5 to about 99.9. 99.9 minus 97.5 is an increase of 2.4. Okay, how about a decrease of 2.4? Two and a half minus 2.4 is 0 0.1. And this is where you find minus three or negative three standard deviations. So again, the 50th percentile is the median. One standard deviation above the mean is the 84th percentile. One standard deviation below the mean is the 16th percentile, approximately. Two standard deviations above the mean is the 97.5 percentile. And two standard deviations below the mean is 2.5 percentile. Three standard deviations above the mean, 99.9th percentile and three standard deviations below the mean is 0 0.1 percentile. Technically, the normal distribution curve starts at negative infinity and ends at positive infinity. Therefore, the zeroth percentile is the negative infinity, whereas the positive infinity is the hundredth percentile. So now you know what we mean by the measure of central tendency, mean, median, mode, and the 50th percentile, and the measures of variance, such as the standard deviation. Another way to look at this graph is that you can argue that 34 plus 34 is 68. So 68% 68 of the population lies between one standard deviation above and one standard deviation below the mean, or positive one sigma and negative one sigma. If you add 13.5 above and 13.5 below to the 68, you get 95. So 95% 95 of the population lies between two standard deviations, two above and two below. 
and then add 2.4 here and 2.4 there and about 99.5 percent of the population lies between positive 3 sigma and negative 3 sigma. So 68% of the population is within one standard deviation above and below. 95% of the population is within two standard deviations above and below. And 99.8% of the population is between three standard deviations above and below. That's why this is called the 68-95-99 rule. Cool. Next, what the hell is a z-score? Let me give you an example. Let's say that your z-score is 0 0.7 and it's a positive number. What does that mean? It means that your score is 0 0.7 standard deviations above the mean, which is going to be about here. What if I told you that your z-score or z-score is negative 0 0.7? What does that mean? It means that your score is 0 0.7 standard deviations below the mean. Why below? Because of the negative sign. How about a z-score of positive 2? What does that mean? It means that your score is 2 standard deviations above the mean, which means at that 97.5th percentile approximately. And if your z-score is negative 3, then your score is 3 standard deviations below the mean. Easy peasy, lemon squeezy, medicosis schmeezy. Don't forget to watch my other videos in my statistics playlist. If you value what I do, help me make more videos by supporting the channel, go to buymeacoffee.com slash medicosis. There are more than 700 premium videos available on this channel when you click the join button and choose the highest tier. Please subscribe, hit the bell, smash like, support my channel on Patreon, PayPal, or Venmo, go to my website to download my courses, notes, and cases, or if you would like me to personally tutor you. Be safe, stay happy, study hard. This is Medicosis Perfectionalis, where medicine, chemistry, math, and physics make perfect sense.